ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय वेरिंग फ्रॉम श्री शिपनिषद मंत्र तुर्तीन अन्यदेवाहु संभवान अन्यदेवाहु संभवान अन्यदाहुर असंभवान अन्यदाहुर असंभवान इति शुश्रुमधीरानम् इति शुश्रुमधीरानम् ये नस्तत विचक्षिरे सो हियर द ट्रांसलेशन मंत्र तर्तीन ऑफ विश्वपनिषद बस चला प्रावपन it is said that one result is obtained by worshipping the supreme cause of all causes, and that another result is obtained by worshipping what is not supreme. All this is heard from the understood authorities who clearly explained it. So this is a continuation of the series of shlokas um, grouped in three by three. Here the shloka 12 fund started this... Um, Three shlokas which are linked. Andam tamat pravishanti ye sambhutim upasate tato bhuya evate tamo yau sambhutyam rata. Those who are engaged in worship of demigods enter the darkest region of ignorance and still more so do the worship as impersonal absolute. So now today shloka says, continues, it is said that one result is obtained by worshiping supreme cause of all causes and another result is obtained by worshiping what is not supreme. All this is heard from the understood authorities who clearly explain it. And then the third shloka will give the conclusion, shloka 14. So here, Srila Prabhupada in the purport explains, first point, that hearing from understood authorities, undisturbed authorities, unless one hears from a bona fide acharya who is never disturbed by the changes of the material world, one cannot have the real key to the transcendental knowledge. So here, this is the, the key of understanding, key of understanding that, that it is not the same when you worship supreme and you worship anything else that is less than supreme. You won't achieve the same result. This you can understand if you hear from a guru, from the acharya who come in disciplic succession and who is undisturbed, self-realized soul. Acharya never presents anything that is not mentioned in the Vedic literature. So this is another characteristic. We have recently, there was some Twitter conversation with famous Indian guru, and uh, he given some rather unusual answers to the questions. What is the goal of life? Put on list what is not goal of life, and you know the last thing which remains, that is the goal of life. Uh, some funny answers, you know. What is the goal of life? Sarva dharmam paritya jama me kamsham. That is what guru should say. But he went on speculating something. So one devotee who was involved in that, he posted the Twitter to him, that, Guruji, where do you get this knowledge? And he replied, whatever you get today is freshly baked. That, which means he just speculated it on the spot. It's not from Vedic literature. If anybody asks us, what to speak of our gurus, but us who are representatives of Srila Prabhupada, where do you get this knowledge from? What do we say? From Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. <laughs> this is what, what we should take it also to the heart. Guru, Sadhu, Shastra, Vakya, Chitete, Kori, Aikya. That is how you take order of Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. Narottam Das Thakur sings. So here the point is given that one should hear, must hear. There is no other way to, to understand whom to worship, how to worship unless one um, accepts the instructions from a guru. And the Prabhupada goes on to explain, different results is achieved by different worship. So he exposes this faulty philosophy. Bhagavad Gita, he quotes immediately, Yanti Deva Vrata Devan, Pitrin Yanti, Pitri Vrata, Bhutani Yanti Bhuteja, Yanti Madhya Jinopi Mam. <coughs> We worship the Supreme Lord, will certainly reach him in his eternal abode. And we worship demigods, like sun god, moon god, 
we can reach their respective planets without a doubt. You can do whatever you want to do. That is a different issue. But you don't say that the result will be the same. If we wish to remain on this wretched planet with our planning commissions and our stopgap political adjustment, we can certainly do that. Stopgap political adjustment is temporary. Stopgap means temporary political adjustment. We can do that. Now, nobody will stop you. You want to worship anybody, you worship. But you don't claim that the result will be the same. That, that this is a big difference. And this bogus philosophy is so prominent today in India and all over the world. Everybody has his own path. Why everybody has his own path? Why? Why to say like this? You know? Means, you may say, everybody has to realize individually God. That you can say. You can say that. Everybody has one's own unique relationship with God. Everybody has his own unique swarupa. Everybody has own unique service which he can render to the Lord. That you can say. But why do you say path is different? Krishna says, Sarva dharma parityaja mame kam sharanam raja. For whom he is speaking? Only for Arjun. Arjun, this is only for you. For others, I will instruct differently. So Krishna has to come and to all millions and trillions, unlimited number of jivas, he has to give them their own Gita. Because they have their own path. And bogus, this is not a fact. And this is so much disturbing because you can't instruct anybody. You can't help anybody. They do not accept the guidance. Oh, this is not for me. That was for Arjun. No? Or your guru told you, but my guru doesn't say. No? Or even in his nowadays, they will say, oh, your guru is very strict, but our guru is very lenient. But your guru is following Prabhupada or not? What's the question of lenience? Another fellow who is preaching, he called himself Shiksha Guru. He says, Diksha Guru cannot compromise on principles, but Shiksha Guru can little adjust, you know, and give little. Then you are not Guru. As soon as you compromise on principle, yeah, then you are not Guru. But you see what is going on. It's a Mayava. It's an imperson. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a atheism. It's not even impersonalism. You don't want to accept the guidance from Shastra and Guru. Prabhupada immediately quotes. Prabhupada didn't say even this different <coughs> result is achieved by different worship. He didn't say I said. Immediately he quotes Yanti Deva Vrata Devan, Pitri Yantri, Pitri Vrata, Bhutani Yanti Bhuta Ja. So he, he is not manufacturing his own. So Prabhupada said, okay, you can certainly do whatever you want to do. You can choose any type of worship, but don't expect the same result. How many times have we heard this? I, you have your part, I have my part, you have your way, we have our way. This is not, this is bogus. It doesn't, doesn't work. Okay, so Prabhupada is going on exposing this. Doing anything or worshipping anyone is not authorized. Such foolish theories are offered by self-made spiritual masters who have no connection with the parampara. This is the, this is the truth. This is the truth. Now the thing is, fellow came with his own parampara. He listed, I learned from this guru, I learned from this guru. He made his own parampara, which is nothing to do with parampara, to confuse people. He figured out. And you pose as a spiritual leader, people ask you, where did you learn these things? So, if you say self-manifested knowledge, this is not so much impressive to people. Where is very impressive. I was in Himalayas, and I learned from my guru in Himalayas. Oh, oh his guru. He learned, you see, Guru Parampara. Then it's very impressive, no? <laughs> and then, uh, you know, if you can show some photo of Guruji from Himalaya also, oh, that is even more impressive, you know? All kinds of things are going on now. They, they want to show that they are linked to Parampara, which imaginary Paramparas. Okay, so here, look at this Prabhupada statement. The bona fide spiritual master, cannot say that all paths lead to the same goal and that anyone can attain this goal by his own mode of worship of the demigods or of the supreme or whatever. And he gives a simple example. Ticket for Calcutta, you can reach Calcutta, you cannot go to Bombay. No? So if you follow, what you, okay, practical. Okay, you and ISKCON, you follow four principles. And in 
be, scon- be break four principles. But ultimately, we'll all reach the same. How I'll reach the same? If I break the principles, I'll go to hell. And then f- fellow went on speculating. The fellow was arguing like this. You b- follow, I break. But ultimately, we'll all achieve the same. Yeah, but in the meantime, you have to go to hell to realize that you did mistake. <laughs> you may say, ultimately, everything is there to teach us, you know. But why, if Krishna is giving good advice, why you want to speculate something? Why would people do that? Because they do not want to surrender. They do not want to accept authority. They do not want to accept what is good for them. Why? Due to attachments, due to maya, due to having sense gratification in the name of spiritualism. Prabhupada would say, they are not sincere. Because why, why would you avoid what Shastra says? You have to accept somebody's authority. Why do you think you will figure out yourself? Huh? If you see Vedic knowledge, for thousands of years the rishis are discussing who am I, who is God, what is our relationship, what are pramanas, how to know God is there, what is his nature, what is soul's nature, what is this material world's nature. Thousands of years they were discussed, they accepted, Vedas, Aporushaya. <coughs> These are infallible, these are Vedo Narayana Saksha, they are not different from Narayana, they are transcendental worlds, Shrutes to Shabda Mula Atvat. The Vedas will reveal Supreme Personality of Godhead. It is accepted. No. Now modern man who has no knowledge, no sense control, no mind control, no any culture, no any good qualities whatsoever, is not even learned according to the Vedic standard. Is not even learned, Pastor. They do not know Sanskrit. <laughs> Never studied the Vedas. And he said, I am my own way. You have your way to hell, sir. That's what your way. Nonsense where you have. So proud, so proud, full of ignorance. Just people are so proud. The degree holders. So here. The, but the so-called spiritual master says that any and all paths will take one to the supreme goal. Now look at this. Such mundane and compromising offers attract many foolish creatures who become puffed up with their manufactured methods of spiritual realization. And they go on competing with us. So many bogus groups come and say, we have better offer. Come to us. Why are you going to this? Oh, they will ask you, follow this, follow this. Come to us. We can do meditation. We can do yoga. Then fellow advertising, Guruji is advertising, soul mate yoga. You come do yoga with us, boys and girls are doing together, so you can match the marriage, you know. You may find your soul mate, you know. You see, he advertised it like that. He was ex iskon devotee, couldn't get married in iskon, so he made his own his own society to find the wife. You know, you know. Where is the question of doing boys and girls yoga together when they say that yogi has to be brahmachari? <laughs> it's a question of doing yoga together. Huh? It's cheating. It's cheating that that by yoga exercise you will become God. Okay, you may say, yoga exercise is sattvic exercise of the body, instead of doing this uh, weight building like, and become like orangutan, you know. Uh, yeah. Then better to practice yoga, it's more it's sattvic way of exercising the body. But is the purpose of yoga to exercise the body? <laughs> Not according to Bhagavad Gita. No, purpose of yoga is to link with the Supreme. No? And they dress in that very tight, these are called yoga clothes. Yoga clothes. You know, anyway. So th- 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 this is the point, that many creatures are attracted to that. Oh, yoga. Yoga is good for health. Then when you have good health, you can have better sex. You, know? you can enjoy better. That's the idea. They use yoga for better sex. Complete opposite, no? Yoga for pregnancy. Where's the question of pregnancy with brahmacharis? They have to practice yoga. That's what Gita says. You go to a secluded place. In the middle of New York City, we have yoga center. Uh-huh. And they say, yogi goes to Himalaya, secluded place. Correct? It's all bluff. It's just bluffing. And then the grandmother comes with, you know, healthy safety belt, you know, around themselves. You understand safety belt means big belly. 
And uh, they hope yoga is the key to reduce the well, weight, you know. And actually what happens, yoga is the key to reduce their wealth because they charge them like anything for the yoga. <laughs> you know? It's very popular now, yoga. Very popular. And now the Iskon devotees are in temptation. Shall we also start yoga classes? People will come to us. But we are doing yoga classes, bhakti yoga. is not that yoga also? No? Chanting, is it not yoga? Yoginam api sarvesham, matkatena antaratmana, shraddhavam bhajate yomam, same yukta tamo mataha. Who is the topmost yogi? Shraddhavan, who has a faith, bhajate yomam, who is worshipping me. That is the greatest yogi. Now why we have to do the yoga exercise? I do your exercise for yourself. You have bodily problem, you come and do some exercise, that's okay. But why you advertise it? That's it. So we are chanting 16 rounds, following four principles, and fellow goes for... 20 minutes yoga classes every day, or they are advanced stage, one hour yoga classes. Every morning he goes, before taking bath, because you sweat on yoga, so you take bath later. No? So he goes and does yoga exercise, and then we sit together in the local bus and we talk. So, you did your spiritual practice. You say, yeah, I did 16 rounds. What about you? Yeah, I did yoga, one hour. And, that, and he considered we are equal. He considered we are equally advanced. You know? Yoga exercise, you know. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Okay, so here, these are this manufactured. So-called spiritual masters say, any, any and all paths will take one to supreme goal. Such mundane and compromising offers attract many foolish creatures who become puffed up with their manufactured methods of spiritual realization, you know. Unless one has received knowledge from the bona fide spiritual master who is in the recognized line of disciplic succession, one cannot have the real thing as it is. <coughs> this is very nice. One cannot have the real thing. You'll get the wrong thing. You'll not get the real thing. Huh? And who is recognized in the line of disciplic succession? Not that you make your own disciplic succession, unrecognized disciplic succession. Huh? <laughs> We, in Nagarkoil, there is a Krishna's temple worshipped by one smarter Brahmin. So devotees preached to him and took him to Mayapur. He was in bliss, seeing Panchatattva and Kirtan and dancing and seeing foreign devotees. He was so impressed. So he invited us, please, you are in Tamil Nadu. When you come, definitely you should visit me in Nagarkoil. So when we went traveling, book distribution, we went. There is a beautiful temple, Navanita Taskar's Krishna's temple. Um, eating butter, Murti, Krishna is holding the butter balls in Agarkol, you see? You win? Yeah. So the Pujari there, uh, just behind the temple, there is a small temple. Uh, he has his kind of ashram there. We come to his place, and he's smart a Brahmin, but he started <laughs> chanting Hare Krishna. So as we approach his temple on loudspeaker, you can hear, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So we are so happy, you know. We come into his temple and on the altar you see a big photo of Shankaracharya, next to him photo of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then you have photo of Shankaracharya Parampara and then you have our Parampara, you know. And, you know, we all came, so what to do now? Offer Pranam, not to offer Pranam, to offer Pranam, not to offer Pranam, you know. So we offer Pranam, keeping in mind, to the right part of the altar we are offering Pranam. And uh, we offer Pranam to Shankaracharya and his party also, but as a sadhus. Not exactly as a gurus, we don't take their teachings. So I ask him, um, Prabhuji, what is it? Achintya Veda Veda Tattva. This is Pogus philosophy. This is not Achintya Veda Veda Tattva that you put everything in one pot. This is called Kichari. If you put whatever you have in one pot and cook it, that's called Kichari, you know, not the Achintya Veda Veda Tattva Pogus, you know. So, due to keeping attachment for the, that Sampradaya, he could not surrender, he could not take diksha. Though still he is chanting. It's very weird, you can see him, morning three lines, and then Hare Krishna, and he chants on mic, on loudspeakers, and all two streets around, they have to hear it. Whenever he wakes up, 4.30, 5 o'clock, puts on, and Hare Krishna sits down, chants 16 rounds, full out. So he's preaching. He gets some realization. I, don't, I didn't see him long time, let me see, maybe some photos were removed, ultimately. Okay, so Krishna, Prabhupada gives an example of Krishna teaching Arjun. In other words, only the Lord's devotee and friend 
can understand Gita. In a nice lecture, Prabhupada says, Why did Krishna teach Arjun? Krishna told him, Priyosime, Bhaktosime. <laughs> Prabhupada is telling, You're very dear to me, you're my devotee. Therefore, Rahasyam Hedatutamam, I give that secret to you. Interpreters explain the verses of Gita in their own way and postulate all sorts of rubbish in the name of the Gita. Such interpreters believe neither in Krishna nor in his eternal abode. How then can they explain the Bhagavad Gita? When fellow says, ultimately, man manava man bhakto, ultimately you surrender to unborn within Krishna. <laughs> Why unborn within? Why are you speculating? That famous, no? Dharma Kshetra, Kuru Kshetra. Ah, Dharma Kshetra, that is the body. And five Pandavas are five senses. So one should con So what do you say by this? Pandavas do not exist, Krishna do not exist, it's all allegorical. And uh, don't take direct meaning. Krishna is not Krishna. <laughs> you think Krishna is the, no, Krishna, unborn we think Krishna. Why you speculate? Why? Sri Bhagavan Uvacha, Bhagavan is there, Krishna is there, speaking to his devotee Arjuna. They have form, they have activities, they're performing their pastimes. What's your problem? <laughs> but they cannot, they speculate, they didn't hear from the bona fide guru. So, what is the message? Do what Krishna says, what Ishapanishad says, what all the Vedas says. Krishna clearly says that only those who have lost their sense worship the demigods for paltry rewards. Paltry rewards, paltry means worthless. <coughs> worthless rewards. Huh? Look at how Prabhupada says. Huh? Krishna clearly says only those who have lost their sense, <laughs> who have lost their sense, Worship the demigods. See that? Amazing. Ultimately, he advises that one give up all other ways and modes of worship and fully surrenders unto him alone. What is the shloka? Sarva dharma and parityajya. Only those who are cleansed of all sinful reaction can have such an unflinching faith in the Supreme Lord. This is the problem. Or this is the solution. This is not the problem. Problem is that we have no unflinching faith. What is the definition of faith in Chaitanya Charitamrita? Shraddha Shabde Vishwas Kahe Suri Donishchai Krishna Bhakti Koyle Sarva Karma Krita What does it mean? Faith means firm conviction that by adopting Krishna conscious process, devotional service to the Lord, which starts by chanting His holy name, all perfection will be achieved, love of God will be achieved. This is faith. We have to have faith. We have to have faith in Prabhupada that what he says is right. Simply he is a pure soul. He is linked to Krishna. He himself has spotless character. He himself practices what Krishna is teaching. He himself influenced so many people to practice Krishna Bhakti and made them also pure. Why we should not trust him and believe him? Actually, all of our, our Krishna consciousness, Krishna Bhakti, is based on Prabhupada, faith in Prabhupada. No? Prabhupada's books, Prabhupada's teachings, Prabhupada's disciples. No? All of us, we, we, we live our spiritual life because we believe Prabhupada. No? It is convincing what he says. It, it is, his personality is attractive. His disciples are attractive. What he says makes sense. It's, it's convincing and it's also having effect. When we practice, we feel we advance. We feel some advancement is there. No? Others will continue hovering on the material platform with their paltry ways of worship and thus will be misled from the real path under the false impression that all paths lead to the same goal. See that? Continue hovering. You know, hovering means just hovering. <laughs> so you may be completely on mental platform and thinking, I'm also spiritual, I'm also following spiritual. You know, why? Why have to go to Iskon? I already spoiling, I have already guru, I already. <laughs> you know. the, um, Kratu Prabhu, Srila Prabhupada's disciples, who is Gujarati, but he, he studied in Canada. He was their civil engineer. And there he met Srila Prabhupada and devotees. But in his village in Gujarat, there were some disciples coming in the line of 
and gurus come in line of uh, Narottam Das Thakur, Godya Vaishnavas. So he already had Diksha by the family guru, Gosais. And there they would chant. His mother was chanting 32 rounds, father was chanting 64 rounds, and guru also advised chant 64 rounds. But guru would chew pan and may not be exactly, exactly following everything strictly. <coughs> you know. But you know, as a family belonging to that village and that line, they, they all took diksha. So he was not chanting in Canada, but you know, in childhood he used to chant, he used to attend the Sankirtan through the village like that. And uh, when he met Prabhupada, his disciples, uh, he was, uh, wow, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I know. I know Mahamantra. I was chanting. My mother is chanting 32 rounds. You know, I had my own Japamala in my village. So devotees say, okay, here is no Japamala here in America. You have to chant here, Canada, wherever he was, Montreal. And uh, he was attracted immediately. Immediately he picked up bhakti and, uh, you know, did service in the temple. So one month later, or one or two months later, Srila Prabhupada arrived. And when um, the opportunity was there, he asked Srila Prabhupada that um, Srila Prabhupada is coming from that line and already I have diksha, so do I have to take reinitiation or something like that? Because I want to be your servant. So Prabhupada, they are walking, walking, Prabhupada just look. One should take initiation from a, bono, from a bona fide spiritual master and continue walking. That's only what he said. So in the morning, Kratu Prabhu, the time, Manohar, Manohar Bhai, <laughs> he came, offered pranam to Prabhupada, said, Srila Prabhupada, please bless me, please you initiate me. And Prabhupada smiled, big smile, yes. <laughs> so you understood. <laughs> Prabhupada didn't say, yes, you should take Diksha from me. He didn't say that. He said, you should take Diksha from one of our spiritual masters. <laughs> so, <laughs> made it clear, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, Jata Mat Tata Pat. You ever heard this? Okay. Worship Krishna, because he is the Supreme Lord. No? Do what Krishna says, and Veda says. So what do the Krishna and Veda says? Well, worship Krishna. The word Sambhavat, by worship of the Supreme Cause, is very significant. Lord Krishna is the original personality of Godhead, and everything that exists has emanated from Him. Bhagavad Gita 10.8 Aham Sarvasya Prabhava Matasaram Pravatate The word Sarvasya Prabhava indicates that Krishna is creator of everyone, including Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. And then what Prabhupada does, just go on quoting Shastra, Krishna is supreme, Krishna is supreme, Krishna is supreme, Krishna is supreme. You should worship Krishna, no one else. Just look at how many shlokas he is quoting. This is Acharya. There's no need to manufacture, there's no need to, so how to present. Just quote shlokas. How to explain to them Krishna is supreme. Quote Gita, quote Upanishads, look one after another. Atarva Veda, Gopal Tapani Upanishad, similarly said, he who existed before creation of Brahma and who enlightened Brahma with Vedic knowledge is Lord Sri Krishna. Okay? Narayana Upanishad. Then the Supreme Person Narayana desired to create living beings. Thus from Narayana, Brahma was born. From Narayana, Narayana created all the Prajapatis. Narayana created Indra. Narayana created eight Vasus. Narayana created eleven Rudras. Narayana <coughs> created twelve Adityas. The Narayana Upanishad also said, Devaki's son, Krishna, is the Supreme Lord. Brahmanyo Ah. Brahmanyo Devaki Putraha. Who is that Brahman? You are speaking Brahman, Brahman. Who is that Brahman? Devaki Putraha, the son of Devaki. That is the Brahman. The identity of Narayan with the Supreme Cause has also been accepted and confirmed by Shri Shankaracharya. Because you may say, but we follow Shankaracharya. Okay. Even though Shankar does not belong to Vaishnava personal cult, what did he say? Narayana paro vyakta. Narayana is above this vyakta vyakta, manifested and unmanifested material nature. Atarva Veda, Maha Upanishad also said, all in Narayana existed in the beginning, where neither Brahma nor Shiva nor fire nor water, no stars, no sun, no moon existed. Narayana, Vaida Agra, Asi, na Brahma, na Cha Shankara, na Nakshatra, na Aditya. The Lord does not remain alone, but He creates as He desires. 
Eko Bahu Shyam Prajayata. Then Krishna himself said in Moksha Dharma, again this is from 10.8 purport, no? I created the Prajapatis and the Rudras that do not have complete knowledge of me because they are covered by my illusory energy. Moksha Dharma. Moksha Dharma means, is it Mahabharata? It is also stated in Varaha Purana. Narayana is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and from him the four-headed Brahma was manifested as well as Rudra who later became omniscient. Thus, all Vedic literature confirms that Narayana or Krishna is the cause of all causes. Brahma Samhita 5.1 also says, Ishwara Parama Krishna Sachitananda Vigraha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karna Karna The really learned person know this from evidence given by the great sages and the Vedas, and thus they decide to worship Lord Krishna as all in all. Such persons are called Buddha, or really learned, because they worship only Krishna. So this is a really big paragraph in the purport. Prabhupada is establishing, Krishna is supreme, you should worship Krishna only. Hearing from Anacharya with faith and love. Now Prabhupada explains, one who has no faith, in or love for Krishna cannot be convinced of this simple truth. Correct? Without faith and without love, of course, one cannot accept. So what is the process of devotional service? Adao Shraddha. First, faith is there. This faith is created by Agyata Sukriti, by unknowingly being involved, benefited by the devotees, and by Holy Dame, by Krishna himself into the devotional service. Agyata Sukriti. Unknowingly, we do some devotional service. People go around the temple, accept some aprasadam, hear the holy name. Uh, Sir, can you help us? You know, something. And then he helps devotees, and then he gets Agyata Sukriti. This Agyata Sukriti uh, matures into respect. First, respect is born. Some appreciation of devotees. Oh, these are, I think these are good people. Uh, Little desire to, to, be, to see them, to meet them, feeling pleasant to meet them. Then it matures in the faith. Ah, oh, yes, you can trust these people. Let me see what they do. Then that Adao Shraddha matures into desire. Let me associate with them. Then goes Adao Shraddha, Tat Satsanga. But to accumulate this Agyata Sukriti takes some time. Some people quickly pick up, some people take a little time. But unless this faith is there, there is no way of progress. There is no way of developing love for Krishna. Faith must be there. Uh, so this is what Prabhupada says. One who has no faith in or love for Krishna cannot con be convinced of this simple truth. What is the simple truth? That Krishna is supreme and we should serve him, worship him. It is said that the Mudas deride the personality of Godhead because they do not have complete knowledge from the understood Acharya. Again, Prabhupada is linking everything, no? That one should hear from undisturbed acharyas. What is that? Parambhavama jananto. They do not know my superior transcendental nature. Mama Bhuta Maheshwara. That I am supreme lord of all living beings. Huh? Fools or asses. Prabhupada speaks. No, no. Krishna says. <laughs> one who is disturbed by the whirlpool of material energy is not qualified to become an acharya. So this is another thing, that this is the qualification of the undisturbed dhira, acharya. Example, Prabhupada says, before hearing Gita, Arjuna was disturbed by material's whirlpool, by his affection to his family, society, and community. Thus Arjuna wanted to become philanthropic, non-violent man of the world. You see that? And it's still popular, this idea. Be good. Why do I need God to be good? I don't want to harm others. I don't want to disturb others. I, I, I don't interfere. You do your sense gratification. I do my sense gratification. I don't disturb you. You don't disturb me. Why I need God to be good? Because you do not know what means good. Very fact that you think that I don't need God. You are not good. <laughs> yeah? And you can't help yourself because your good is on material platform. You're helping people is on maybe Sattva Gun platform. You are feeding the people and kind to them and consulting them and you are counseling them and you are, you know, benefiting them by food, by clothes, by medical treatments, by all kinds of philanthropic 
non-violent, green, environmental good programs. No, that was it. No, G, G, M food, you know, that modified. Huh? Genetic. Genetically modified food. No GM food. We are giving non-GM brinjal to the poor. We are so good. Huh? But this is all things will lead you to heaven. That's all. You become nice and good and helping others, you will become devata. Then you will bestow the rain or the sunshine or the grains. These different devatas give you different blessings. But you are not going to come out of material world. And because materialistic people cannot appreciate the spiritual people, they cannot see the spiritual need, the spiritual message, they cannot understand what the spiritual process, they think, what is this Hare Krishna doing? Why they are not opening hospitals? Why they are not helping people? How do you help the people? How do you help society? Simply selling books around. What is that? You know, people have to study. They become engineers. They have to become doctors. Why are you disturbing? Now you are pushing them to read these big, big books, you know. How they will read? They have to get the education. They have to get a degree. They have to get that money. Why don't you help? How do you help, How do you help society? What are you doing for the people? <coughs> Simply chanting, chanting. How will this help? Better serving hands than praying hands. There is a, some another foolish proverb. We also say, don't just pray, do something. <laughs> you know? Oh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, please engage me in service, engage me in the service. And when they say, Prabhuji, do some service, I'm chanting, you know. <laughs> you have to do some service. You know? But you see so many speculations, so many ways of avoiding surrender. Because people are materialistic, they cannot understand what is spirit. They cannot see the spirit. They cannot see the spiritual path, the spiritual process, the spiritual people. They cannot understand what is the real benefit for them. Then they are easily carried away by this Monday social work. So this is the ideal. What is that? You be good man, philanthropic, non-violent man of the world. And Arjun also say, hey, why to fight Krishna? If they are into this kingdom, I'm not. Let them take the kingdom. Let them kill me. I don't care. I should be non-violent. <laughs> yeah? But that's not the, what you're supposed to do, Mr. Kshatriya. You have to protect Dharma. That's the point. You have to protect people to be influenced by adharmic leaders. No? If thief comes to the bank and Chokidar suddenly realizes, Om Shanti, why to fight? Let's give up the violence, be non-violent and philanthropic. Mr. Thief, I'll also contribute something. Don't, don't steal, be good. No? But if he doesn't use his gun and protects the bank, he will go to jail. And the judge won't buy that excuse that, you see, I'm a good man, I, I don't support violence. But you are getting salary every month to protect to do your duty. And now when thief has come, you become Shantarasa, you are displaying, you know, oh, why to fight? Huh? Huh? You have to protect the law. So, all these things, the people are um, very much attracted with this. If, if we say, Sir, we are building temple, please give us donation. Why are you building temples? There's so many temples. Why don't you open the school? Why don't you open hospitals? As if there is no any school or any, no any hospital around, you know? No? And we, what is our answer? Uh, no, we'll open, we'll open. <laughs> no, that's not our answer. Our answer is, people need this spiritual education. Your hospital will cure the body, not the soul. People have to take birth again. Unless they realize God, they have to take birth again and again and again. Why people are diseased? Because of bad karma. We are teaching how to do good karma. Huh? Why the all suffering is there? Because of forgetfulness of Krishna. This is real education. This is real hospital. But they do not know. Oh, oh, like that. Okay. You read the books, then you understand. So like that, we have to preach, we have to tell them. And some people indeed understood. Oh yes, this is important. Why? Because all your modern educational institution cannot, win one, cannot make one good quality man. Cannot make one good character. Cannot. Because everything is based on sense gratification, exploitation of others, exploitation of resources, exploitation of people, and self-oriented enjoyment. That's all. So they cannot, they fail. 
So unless they come to our temple, they cannot be good people. You can't produce good. All Varna Sankara. All useless people who harm others. Yeah. Okay. But Prabhupada said, but when he became Buddha, by hearing the Vedic knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita from Supreme Person, he changed his decision and became worshipper of Lord Krishna, who had himself arranged the battle of Kurukshetra. Now, after hearing from Krishna, Arjun understood, oh, the fight is beneficial. He thought, why to fight, why to kill? Killing is never good. No, killing for Dharma is good. Oh, absolute non-violence should be adopted. No, there is no absolute non-violence because bad elements are there. Paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya shatushkitam. Krishna says bad elements are there. If, if a soldier on the order of general kills enemies, he is awarded. There is no sin for him. Violence is there, but it is done to protect the country, to protect the Dharma, to protect the people. There is no sin in that. If soldiers go home for, for vacation, he goes home and kills his neighbor because of some misunderstanding, he will go to jail. Not that because you are a soldier you can just kill around as you like. But if you do it the dharmic way, that this is authorized. There is no papam. There is a ward. He will be a hero if he does this. So this is what happened to Arjun. Arjun was, by killing, he got his moksha secured. Of course, we know Arjun is eternally liberated soul. But he is teaching, he is showing the pathway. You follow what Krishna says, that is dharma. You please Krishna. If Krishna is pleased with battle, we'll fight. If Krishna said, Om Shanti, Om Shanti. <laughs> Whatever he says, that is the dharma. No? And also it makes sense. It's not just blindly Krishna just throwing some idea, making us like a puppets without thinking, without reasoning, without understanding, without logic, without intelligence that we follow something. No. Krishna explains that I want my devotee to lead the world. I want Yudhishthira to be in charge, not this sinful Duryodhana. How he will benefit people? He's not going to benefit people, he's going to exploit people. But if Yudhishthira is king, that's my desire, that all world will become devotee. No? And people will stop repeated birth and death. Under Yudhishthira's leadership, they will all go home back to Godhead. If you have pious, saintly king, he's able to liberate his kinsmen. That is Krishna's plan for benefit of jivas. Huh? So Duryodhana will lead them into sense gratification, as himself was sense gratifier, an offender. So Arjun worshipped the Lord by fighting with his so-called relatives, and in this way he became a pure devotee of the Lord. So here, Prabhupada concludes, Krishna is Sambhuta, the object of worship, not humanity. That's another popular one. According to Vedanta Sutra, Sambhuta is the source of birth and sustenance, as well as the reservoir that remains after the annihilation, Janma Yataha. The source of all emanations is not like a dead stone, but it is Abhigya, fully conscious. It's a person, absolute truth is a person, it's a fully conscious living being, supreme living being. The primeval Lord, Sri Krishna, also said in Bhagavad Gita, 7.26, that he is fully conscious of past, present, and future, and that no one, including demigods as Shiva and Brahma, knows him fully. Certainly, half-educated spiritual leaders who are disturbed by the tides of material existence cannot know him fully. And this is what they speculate. They speculate about Krishna. They can't get it right. They can't be a simple truth that Krishna is a person who exists in Vaikuntha, who comes on his own will in his spiritual form and instructs people for their benefit. What's the big fuss about that to, to now speculate? Unknown. Krishna means black. Black means something. Something is nothing. Nothing is everything. Think about it. But read Gita. Why you speculate? Why confusing? Why you all the time confusing? Krishna. 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 Obviously, he doesn't understand because he's looking around for the answer. <laughs> big confusion. And they pose as a big spiritual leaders. They're bluffing like anything. They're bluffing like anything. They don't accept Krishna as a person. They don't want to surrender. They try to make some compromise by making mass of humanity the object of worship. No? No. 
see Krishna in everyone. Is Krishna in everyone? Of course, Sarvasya Chahabharide Sanavishta, Krishna is in everyone. Why don't you see Krishna in everyone and serve humanity? But how do you serve humanity? By helping them to stop repeated birth and death. How do I serve? Say, poor man comes and say, I'm hungry, sir. Okay, here you go. Here's the kitchen. He will come next day. Sir, I'm hungry. Okay, give him again kitchen. Third day he comes. Sir, <laughs> supper to supper. I'm hungry. Oh, not enough to feed them. We have to send them to the school. Let them get educated. Let them get training in some job so he can feed himself. Okay, correct? Hmm? Okay, so you educate him, you get him job. Now he maintains himself. How did you help him? He's going to die and take birth again and become hungry again. How did you help him? You did not help him really. Temporary relief you give him. Temporary relief. Okay, I'm hungry, here you fed him. I'm hungry, you fed him. And now you made him self-empowered so he can feed himself. But you did not empower him to release himself from material birth and death. So you waste the time. You help the body. <coughs> Actually, you didn't help the soul to come out of material world. It's a mundane understanding. If you are cleaning the car and putting diesel in the car, but you forgot to feed the driver. <laughs> so simple. This is so simple. One of the first analogies when we joined uh, devotees association, no, they say, bird in the cage. It looks so simple, it looks so childish example, but it's so profound, so deep, no? You polish the cage, you forget to feed the bird. No, whatever you do for body is a cage. The soul is in cage in the body. Whatever you do for the body, who is that fool that he's polishing cage and forgot to feed the bird? It's a crazy thing. That's what's going on. 99% of people do that. They're just taking care of body, bodily needs, bodily needs, bodily needs, and extended bodily needs, relatives and other nation and this one and that one. But they forgot to please the soul, to shelter the soul, to save the soul, to engage soul in devotional service to Krishna. So what is the use of this feeding the poor? What is it? Feed them prasadam. Okay, do that. Poor people come and say, sir, I'm hungry. Come, take it. This is Krishna Prasadam. This is mercy of God. God given grains, no? Without rain, there is no grain. Ah, yes. God is great. Okay. Eat Prasadam and think, thank to God. He advances spiritually. His spiritual life started. His repeated birth and death is at the end. Just simple gesture. You tell him about Krishna and tell him. You say, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. Honor Krishna Prasadam. So he may say, okay, whatever they say, I'll say, Hare Krishna, no problem, just give me to eat. He may not have understanding at the beginning, but he is taking Krishna prasadam. He is getting purified. Prabhupada said, when we go and distribute prasadam around, the prasadam distribution should be accompanied by Krishna kirtan. Kirtan should be there, not just prasadam distribution. Merely feeding the poor, that is not going to help. Feed them prasadam. So here, they are trying to make some compromise by making mass of humanity the object of worship. But they do not know that such worship is only a myth, because the masses are imperfect. How, what are you going to achieve by the serving humanity? They are not going to achieve permanent life. Example, pouring water on the leaves of the tree instead of the root worship. You have to pour water on the root, then the branches, trees, leaves, mangoes, I mean fruits, <coughs> whatever is on the tree, <laughs> you know, will be nourished. So we worship Krishna, and because Krishna is the root of everything, Janma Dhyasayataha, then the, all the, our parents, our relatives, uh, poor people, rich people, devatas, everybody will be pleased if we please Krishna. This is, this is the system. Huh? Worship of the mass of humanity by rendering bodily service which can never be perfect, is less important than service to the soul. So this we must understand. This, this we should not be sentimental. Uh, oh, let's feed the poor. If you want to feed the poor, give them prasadam, tell them about Krishna. Prabhupada say, why feeding only poor? Feed rich people also. Because who is poor? One who does not know about Krishna, he is poor. 
ich brauche ein Werk leer. And even sometimes rich people come and say, please take some prasada. No, 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 we have enough. God has given us enough. Give to somebody in need. You are in need. You need Krishna's mercy. Everybody needs prasada. It's completely different. It's a spiritual food. It's nothing to do with feeding body. Of course, that's the both things. It feeds the body and it feeds the soul also. It purifies. Do not underestimate the potency of prasadam. Prasadam can change consciousness of a person. It's a, it's a spiritual. It's Krishna's remnants. To serve human beings by medical aid, social help, and education facilities, while at the same time cutting the throats of poor animals in slaughterhouses, is no service at all to the soul, the living being. This is what's going on in the West. There, there. Uh, you know, so much into this that, that uh, we should have good social facility, we should have free education, good education, um, good countries are which provide free education, free medical treatment. You know, you know how much money we spend in hospitals, correct? So much money. There are countries which give free medical treatment and uh, uh, free education, and uh, even they give some money monthly to the citizens. Just now, there was, we just heard, where was that? In Sweden. Here in England, it's not the same thing. In England also. You get it in Sweden, considered very advanced, that uh, every month citizens get from government some extra money. Some, what was it? Something around, how much was it? I forgot the number. Some amount, some 2,000 euros or something. Or 2,000 crowns, Swedish crowns. You know? And free education, free, and what a good society. Okay. No? But what do they do? They eat meat. They're good to each other, they help each other, and that they, they open the most sophisticated uh, slaughterhouses where thousands of animals are slaughtered daily. Daily. If you see these numbers, how many chickens are killed daily, how many fishes are killed daily, how many cows are killed daily, goats, sheep. This is horrible. This is horror. Horror. You know? There's so much concern on how you treat your dog. If you mistreat your dog, you can go to jail. And just behind the corner next day, there is slaughterhouse, cows are killed, nobody cares. You see, that means rendering bodily service can never be perfect. Can never be perfect. You be a big bluff, you know, big bluff. You know, oh, you should, what is that? If you keep your dog in the car, say people go for shopping, and they keep, take their dog with them. So they don't want to take dog in the shopping market, maybe not allowed also. So they keep dog in the car. Outside is hot, windows are closed, dog is suffering inside. If police caught you, you'll have to pay fine. Why are you torturing dog? No? And after the government charges you fine, the government people go for the lunch, meat eaters. They kill so, they're killing the cows, no problem. No fine for them. And dog was a little bit on the hot sun, $100 bill. You see hypocrisy, you see fully, it's imperfection. So much imperfect, you know. So, so imperfect, so contradictory, you know. We have to treat, there is an organization called PETA, People for Ethical Treatment of Animals. So if any animal is in danger, they will put case on you, and the elephants from circus will be de delivered by them, and uh, you know, whatever, anybody mistreating animals, and they are doing good in one way, they are propagating, one should be vegetarian, one should not wear a fur, <coughs> the skin of the animal on their, as their coats, you know? But uh, still, they are not even attempted to stop even one slaughterhouse in the USA, which has the biggest slaughterhouses in the world. <laughs> Why do not stop cow killing? Because it's so much accepted by this demonic society that this is normal thing, that is just going on, you know? Cows are there to be killed for meat, no? <laughs> it's so difficult to explain, the simple point. Prabhupada, so much speaking with Christians, this, um, thou shall not kill. Why you are maintaining bigger slaughterhouses, maintained by Christian countries, by Christian governments? Biggest slaughterhouse. And there will be a reaction. Prabhupada said, till cow killing is going on, war will be there. There will be no rest, no peace. 
to serve human beings by medical aid, social help, education facility, while at the same time cutting throats of animals, is no service to the soul. Real service to humanity is rendering, rendered when one teaches surrender to and worship of the Supreme Lord with full love and energy. That is the instruction of Shri Upanishad in this mantra. Prabhupada gives his summary. And then, how to worship? Prabhupada explains, the simple way to worship Supreme Lord in this age of disturbance is to hear and chant about his great activities. Instead of hearing our activities of Lord Krishna, such pseudo spiritual masters, advertise themselves by in, in, inducing their followers to sing about them. Correct? We have so many bogus spiritual masters. There was one fellow called Meher Baba in Andhra. He was famous. He was famous in the world also. And uh, he given Mauna Vrata for 25 years for the benefit of all. But then when he spoke, he didn't speak from the Vedas. So now uh, the, his followers are distributing Maha Mantra. Hare Meher, Hare Meher, Meher Meher, Hare Hare. Hare Baba, Hare Baba, Meher Baba, Hare Hare. Sticker, I, I got sticker in the train, they were pushing. Chant the Maha Mantra. See, how the, you see what they did? See what they did? Instead of glorifying Krishna, then another one, what is that? Um, Sai Baba, no? He pushed himself into Gayatri Mantra. Om Sai Burbua pushed himself into the Gayatri Mantra. <laughs> Om Sai Ram, Om Sai Krishna, and they made mantras out of it, you know? Songs, which is like Balaji, his name is there. Yeah, then Tirupati Balaji song, just eight sai. Yeah, just, you know, in nice sweet rice, ate some poison, you know. Poison? What else? A poison. Why? Why he is pretending to be God? No? In Tirupati, Balaji is carrying different palanquins. In Puttaparthi, this uh, fellow was carried in, you know, no, golden chariot, like a Surya. He's sitting there with his. Uh, um, <laughs> hair, hair, hello. <laughs> no? It's pretending that he is God. He's bluffing. He's not saying, people, followers, you worship. And then when they ask him, why you are saying you are God? I'm not saying. They are saying. No? But the rascal, he's saying, I saw in his book, which was printed from his lecture, he said, Think of Krishna, think of Ram, think of me. You see that? All the same. You see, he's putting himself on the stage. <laughs> yeah, cheaters. These are cheaters. And then, why you speak against Sai Baba? He opened so many hospitals. It didn't help him. His own hospital didn't help him. No, he died. Uh, he's doing so much good for people. What is good for people if you pretend that you are good? Huh? I come to your house. You are married, you have wife and children. I give to your children sweets. And then pretend to your wife and your children that I'm their father. You like that one? He's a good why you are why are you upset? I'm good man, I'm giving sweets to your kids, no? And a little bit enjoying with your wife in the meantime. No? A rascal, why he is accepting worship which is meant for Krishna, which is meant for Ram. Why he is uh, taking emotions of people, devotion, people, the service for himself instead of directing towards Krishna for their benefit? Just enjoy it. Just, just rascal. No? You will be arrested. He should be. He is arrested by Yamadutas. But there are so many like this, propagating their own names. This Nityananda also has his mantra. They're just manufacturing, you know? Huh? Of course, my name is Goku Chandra Das. I'm sure in Vedas my name is mentioned. I'll find the sloka. <laughs> huh? uh, what is that? Gokulakam Mahatpadam. That's it. <laughs> Brahma Samhita says. You don't accept Brahma Samhita? Huh? Eh? You see, Gokul Baba appear in Karpur. It's, it's a, you think you are laughing. Of course we are laughing. Is laughable, of course. But point is, people are being cheated. People have tendency to worship, to have guru. But these, these gurus are taking. Instead of guiding them to Krishna, they are snatching from Krishna. They are on the way, snatching, taking away. Taking away the souls with them to hell. They are not allowing. 
It's a big problem. We have to present Krishna. We have to deliver Krishna to people. This is, this is the thing. Okay. The Upanishads indirectly draw our attention to primeval Lord, say Krishna. But Gita, which is a summary of all Upanishads, directly points to Krishna. This is another reason why people are confused. That Upanishads um, describes um, the non-material aspect of the Supreme Lord by calling him Brahman. Therefore, one should hear about Krishna and as he is by hearing from Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam. In this way, one's mind will gradually be cleansed of all contaminated things. This is the process. So Prabhupada quotes Srimad Bhagavatam 1 to 17. By hearing of the activities of the Lord, the devotee draws the attention of the Lord. You hear that? By hearing of activities of the Lord, devotee draws the attention of the Lord. Huh? We want the Lord's attention. Does the Lord being situated in, in the heart of every living being helps the devotee by giving him proper directions? What is the shloka? Srinvata Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana. Prabhupada says, what is the best punya, the best welfare activity? Srinvata Svakata Krishna, hearing and chanting about Krishna. It's beneficial for us, beneficial for others. Okay, the Bhagavad Gita confirms this. The Dami Yogam Tam Yena Mam Upayantite. The Lord's inner direction cleanses the devotee's heart of all contamination produced by material modes of passion and ignorance. Paramatma in the heart will give us. One who is in passion cannot become detached from material hankering, and one who is in ignorance cannot know what he is, what the Lord is. So passion and ignorance we have to get free from. Therefore, we don't take garlic onion, we don't eat meat, we don't eat too spicy food, we don't eat too much tamarind. Hare Krishna? <laughs> in South India, if you say this, you are risking your life. <laughs> but that's what he said in actor of instruction. Correct? First shloka, first purpose. Prabhupada said, too much chili, too much tamarind, not good. Passion. Too much passion. No, and one who is in passion cannot become detached. One who is in ignorance cannot un know, cannot understand. No? So we practice early to bed, early to rise, makes men healthy and wise. <laughs> no? We practice sattva gun. We take bath, we wear clean clothes, we eat clean food, we keep clean environment, we chant mantras, we think good things, we do good deeds. So we practice sattva gun. And if it's in relation with Krishna, he's transcending it. For a devotee, the modes of passion and ignorance are removed by the grace of the Lord. So you may say, we need little passion, need little action, you know. If, to do something, you have to be a little active, you have to have a little, some kind of spirit, no? But this can be purified, utilized in Krishna's service. Even one is a little passionate, okay, go distribute books, you know. You know, Guru Maharaj advised when we had problem with one particular devotee. If he wants to quarrel, let him go out and quarrel with atheists and mayavadis. Leave devotees alone. <laughs> Utilize that, <laughs> your nature, you know. Purify it. Quarrel with atheists. Leave devotees alone. Huh? That's a good one. In this way, the devotee becomes situated in quality of goodness, the sign of perfect brahmana. Anyone can qualify as a brahmana if he follows the path of devotional service under the guidance of one of our spiritual master. Srimad Bhagavatam says, Kirata, Hunandra, Pulinda, Pulkasha. These are all the different tribes which are really not considered Brahminical. <laughs> but they can also practice. Any low-born person can be purified by the guidance of a pure devotee of the Lord. For the Lord is extraordinarily powerful. When one attains Brahminical qualification, he becomes happy and enthusiastic to render devotional service to the Lord. Automatically, the science of God is unveiled before him. By knowing the signs of God, one gradually becomes free from material attachments, and one's doubts, one's doubtful mind becomes crystal clear by the grace of the Lord. Crystal clear. One who attains this stage is liberated soul and can see the Lord in every step of life. This is the perfection. Jivan Mukta. Even in this lifetime, one becomes liberated soul. This is the perfection of Sambhava, as is described in this mantra of Shri Upanishad. Okay. So now, 
This shloka, you can see, it hinted that don't say it's same worshipping Krishna or worshipping anybody else or anything else. This is so much emphasized. And uh, this is the duty of spiritual master to tell people what is right and what is wrong. This, this idea of new age movement, be positive. We share only pluses in the air. Why you are negative? You know. I met my friend after many, many years. And you know, I was happy to say, so. wow, after 10 years seeing you, good to see you alive. <gasps> Why you are so negative? I didn't say good to see you dead. I say good to see you alive. You know? should not ask like this. should be positive. Everything you say should be positive. Then only positive thing will happen. You know, you big drama, you know. Okay, be positive. Tell your children, tell your children, when you go to school, you have to cross the road. So, when you see green line, you cross the road. Don't tell him not to cross the road. This is negative. Don't tell him about red light. No? It's very, why you want to tell the negative things? Tell just positive things. Correct? So, children will come to the road and they'll see yellow light is there. Red light is there. Maybe father, what did he say? Green light. Oh, no, no, he said red light. What did he say? To cross. Yeah, when you see light, you cross. Okay. You have to tell them, cross on green, don't cross on red. Then is only clear instruction. You have to tell what is to be done, what is not to be done. Yam, niyam. You have to tell both. You have to tell, Sai Baba is not God. Krishna is God. And you explain why. There is no problem. We are not just putting names and blaming people. No, we are explaining. Shastra says, Krishna says, Acharya says. Where is this Sai Baba in the uh, Bhagavad Gita? Huh? Where is it? Puta Parti. Uh, he's there. Abrahma Bhuvanaloka Punaravarti Nojuna. Of course, he is a Mrityu Loka, his place of death. No? So we are not without intelligence, logic, we are not presenting. But you have to tell. Why you want to tell? You just speak about Krishna. But he thinks that Sai Krishna. Fellow came here, I told you that day, you know, he's asking. I said, come and see the, that. Yeah, I came to see Sai Krishna. Sai Krishna. Krishna is here. Sai is two meters on the ground, buried, you know. He's dead. You have to tell. You have to spell it out. You have to speak. Of course, it's not that we go around and disturb everyone. We should have a, a preaching methodology. We should be expert preachers to convince them, but not to make everyone enemy. But I tell you, if you want to tell Krishna is supreme, you are going to disturb people around because they don't believe in it. And you are going to tell him, hey, this is wrong, what are you doing? There is a person in Gujarat, Maharashtra in Gujarat, uh, Pandurang Shastri, he propagated. Why to worship deity? Plant the mango trees. Plant the trees. Build the Vriksha Mandiras. And he opened so many farmhouses. And you see, we get benefit, we get falam. And so many people stopped giving to temple donations, they started buying lands and opening their farms. You know. You see that? So many things like this. So you have to tell, this is wrong. Nothing wrong planting the tree. But why to stop worship of God in that name? Why are you equating planting the tree and worshiping God? You worship the tree, you become a tree. Hanta Kale Chamame Vasmanam, you should remember Krishna, not the tree. So many people are misguided. We have to expose them. And then obviously people won't like it. They will object. Why you are criticizing? You people in this country criticize you. You are so puffed up. You think you know everything. We don't know anything, but Krishna knows everything. If we repeat what Krishna says, therefore we know everything. On our own, we do not know anything. Neither you, sir. <laughs> but you speculate one thing, I can speculate another thing. We will never agree. We will never agree who is supreme. Go on the street and ask people, who is supreme? Murga is supreme. I am supreme. Nobody is supreme. Rajnikant is supreme. Jalalita is supreme. Something they will say. They will never agree. You know? Dharma to Sakshat Bhagavad Pranitama. Dharma is given by God. You have to accept what God says. What Shastra says, what realized soul says, somebody superior to us, we have to admit there is somebody with bigger intelligence, better intelligence, one who knows, one who is free from these urges of Kama, Krodha, Loba, Madhavatsarya, Moha, one who is free from this 
sinful tendencies. From him we hear and we get benefit in life. You can't speculate who is supreme. It doesn't work, simply doesn't work. And therefore we are misguided. Okay, here some of other philosophies. Prabhupada exposed wrong things, which is not supreme. Atheist, atheistic men generally say, Jatamat Tatapat, atheistic men. I thought this is coming from Ramakrishna. According to this view, there are hundreds and thousands of different opinions in human society, and each opinion is as valid religious principle. Now, you see, everybody has right to have his opinion. Nobody can stop you having your opinion. But you cannot say that all opinions are equal. If we discuss, say, man has to go to the surgery, and we all discuss here, opinion of a doctor who is expert, that should be taken into consideration. Uh, why you want to cut this surgery, the cutting not good? If you cut heart surgery, <gasps> it's a big problem. If you cut, you know, the scar will remain for all life. Better don't cut. Give him some tablets. A man will die. His surgery is required. Huh? So sentimentally, you know, family, they would not like to give him for surgery. If you ask them, what do you like to do with your patient? Would you like to keep him in hospital or home? I will keep him home. <laughs> he will leave body home, you know. It's not a question of my opinion, your opinion. It's a question one who knows his opinion should be valid. Even material life doesn't work. Hmm? Best thing is when, we, when they ask film stars, you know, what is your uh, uh, prediction for next elections? What does she know? She is uh, entertaining public. She is, um, you know, in the kingdom they have these fools to entertain the kings, you know. <laughs> King will fight and he will be tired, okay, have a little rest. Okay, you fool, you dance. Say something stupid, make me laugh, entertain me, you know. And then the fool will come, something, you know, he'll do. And king will say, good. And if king is not pleased, head goes off, you know. So what are these people doing? Entertainment business. People are suffering, people are tired, they put TV, they don't want to think any philosophy or anything deep. Light topic, make me laugh, make me a little lusty, you know, increase my uh, <coughs> desires, you know. And this lady comes and sings and dances in public. The lady which sings and dances in public, it's called public woman in Vedic lore. And now we are asking her opinion. Fools from the, uh, you know, entertainment business, now they are giving advice. I think um, it is best for our country to do like this, to vote for this one or that one and this prosperity. This. What do you know? What do you know? What's your qualification? Shaking your body in the public. That's your qualification. You know? Showing your body in the public. This much, this much, this is your height of your intellectual power, you know? You know? That's the quality you could show, the body, you know? No any other quality in you, so you have to, by, by bodily, Showing the body, you qualified yourself, you earn your livelihood. <laughs> it's low class, you know. And their opinion is so important nowadays, so important. Aishwarya Rai said, Amitan Bachchan said, there was it? Sachin Tandrakar, he said, he's a cricket fellow, he's kicking the ball, you know. What do he knows about life? What an intellectual endeavor. What a IQ you have to have to hit the ball, you know. What a crazy people following them also, you know. And now he went into politics. Then you know what's going on there if this type of people are accepted, you know. What do you love in Tamil Nadu? You have all film stars. After finishing film career, they became ministers and chief ministers and remain chief ministers. All of them, all film industry. From one drama, they are making another drama. That's all. No, it seems like it's good qualification to, to become chief minister. You should know how to act. No? <laughs> If you have experience in film, then you can make big drama. People vote for me, I'll benefit you. He's a good actor. <laughs> it's a good actor. Convincing. And people voted for him. Huh? This is all recorded. Huh? Gokul want to see the prison from that side of the wall. <laughs> okay. So we have to tell, we have to expose. Prabhupada expose everyone. And sentimental people may feel hurt. Oh, why is he speaking against this one? Why is he speaking against this one? Whatever is against Krishna, we are against it. 
Whoever is for Krishna, we are with him. Whoever is against Krishna, we are against him. Of course, Krishna, we are broad-minded. Narayana, Ram, any form of the Lord is accepted. And any form of Maya is rejected. What to do? You may say, we are, you are stiff people. <laughs> I would say, we are safe people. <laughs> you know? Okay. So Prabhupada, what he says? Each opinion is a valid religious principle. This philosophy of rascals has killed the religious principles mentioned in the Vedas. Because you don't accept any more Vedas. Whatever you want to speculate, you speculate. And they also use Vedas. They will use Vedas to, to support their speculative philosophy. Such philosophy will become increasingly influential as Kali Yuga progresses. In the last stage of Kali Yuga, Kalkidev, Fierce incarnation of Keshava will descend to kill all the atheists and will save only the devotees of the Lord. So you see what, what is going to happen. That these bogus philosophies will be more and more prominent. More and more cheating religions will come. More and more compromises will be done. Now it is predicted that for 10,000 years, these Prabhupada's teachings will be followed, golden age. The, the process given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra, that will remain in the society for 10,000 years. And after that, darkness of Kali. Kali Yuga will more and more increase, more and more increase, and there will be, there will be no any um, proper teaching or proper religion. Nothing will be there. When Kalki comes, he does not preach. He just cuts heads. He cuts the heads of everyone. And by touching them, spiritual Lord delivers them. It's a different type of preaching. Here, Prabhupada exposes. But these Mayavadi rascals will say that the demigods are also Maya, Krishna is also Maya, everything is Maya, because they don't believe in any form. They say the old forms are made of sattva gun, made of Maya. Therefore, we call them Mayavadi, everything Maya. Krishna Bhakti is Maya also. They, this is what they say. Bhakti is for sentimental people. You chant bhajans, say Hare Krishna, Hare Ram. Okay, okay, do Bhakti. Then one day you will get some jnana. But you have to come to platform Jnana and realize, I am gold, you are gold, we are all gold. Sarvam Kalao Idam Brahma. They say it is good for raising oneself to the platform of impersonalism. Their process is that you, if you want to go to high platform, you take one staircase and get on it and then throw it away. You understand? They say, now you practice bhakti, no problem. You go to temple, good, good. Do deity worship, very good. But once you realize you're not different from God, you don't need guru, you don't need to chant, you don't need to worship deities. This is what they do. They have a process, guru tyag. At one moment, when, when somebody is initiated in our sampradaya, he is servant of the Lord. When somebody is initiated in Ramanuja sampradaya, he remains Ramanuja dasan, servant of the Ramanuja acharya. Somebody is initiating Shankaracharya, he becomes Shankaracharya. Then they call him Shankaracharya. Shankaracharya of Chingarima, Shankaracharya of Kanchipuraman, Shankaracharya of Puri, Shankaracharya of Dwaraka, Shankaracharya of Badrinath. He is considered now, he is the Shankaracharya. You see that? That's called Mayava. Now, now he became realized, means he became equal to this Guru. Gaudiya Vaishnava, Vaishnava is never equal to this Guru. We are eternal servants of Guru. When you come to spiritual law, you are serving under your Guru. Guru is eternal. Because you don't require to come down again, you threw away the steps, staircase. That is their philosophy. So, you take any means. The Ramakrishna mission also say like that. Jata Matata Pat. You can worship Brahma Vacha, you can worship Devi Maya, you can worship Vasu, you can worship Rudra, you can worship anyone. Ultimately, you become one with the Supreme. Most misguided. Hmm? There is a type of spiritual master and disciple, much advertised in this age of Kali. It is said that master injects spiritual force into the disciple by electrical current generated by the master. And the disciple begins to feel the shock. He becomes unconscious, and the master weeps for his exhausting his store of the so-called spiritual assets. Now Guru gives blessing to Shishya, and current goes, and 
disciple gets cut and shocked and faints, and when he opens his eyes, his guru is crying. Maharaj, why are you crying? All my shakti are given to you, I have no more shakti. <laughs> you know who is the guru, who is the disciple? Everybody knows, nobody wants to tell. Such Bhagavad advertisement is going on in this age, and the poor common man is becoming the victim of such advertisement. No? When people took Diksha in Mayapur, they invited their relatives. So one day what they told me, he's a, what is it? Father's brother, uncle. His uncle was into this mission who propagates this. So, how did you feel? How did you feel? I said, nice, bliss, you know. So, when Guru given that mantra, Diksha and even Japama, how did you feel that moment, that very important moment? How did you feel? He said, well, you see, actually I was confused. He asked me for principles, then I couldn't remember. And you know, I was fasting all day, so I was a little confused. <laughs> oh. Mm. Then ultimately he asked, but then when he touched, then, then, did you feel that current? <laughs> he asked, no, this is now in May, no, now it's happening. Still this idea that you feel that electric current shock, you know. Yeah. And there is another, Mataji from France, she also said, I took Diksha and I felt, oh, that's it, just give a name of a pronoun. Because there is so much reading about this Buddhist experiences and, you know, Buddhist guru testing disciple and then and he has these flashes of lights appearing in front of him and all this. Yeah. So, it's not like that. It's a simple thing. Of course it's special. It's a special, spiritual, blissful experience that we took shelter under Prabhupada's family and the Prabhupada's little sweet by accepting guidance and diksha from his disciples. But point is that we understand there is no spiritual emotions in impure state. Unless we get purified, whatever we feel is coming mostly from mind, mental health, is material, is temporary. And Krishna gives that drops few, um, few drops of nectar to keep us alive. A little bit, uh, you may say, ecstasy of us, few drops, just to give us a little taste, a little bit. Kirtan is nice, please. Prasadam is nice, associated with the devotee is nice. This is spiritual feeling. But it's the beginning, it's the beginning. Unless one is purified, it's our senses, our feelings, these are all uh, colored very much. So Prabhupada says, such Bhagavad advertisement is going on in this age, and poor common man is becoming the victim of such advertisement. We do not find such a folk, folk tales in the dealings of Shukara Goswami and his great disciple Maharaj Parikshit. So Prabhupada immediately step to the point. Look at the Bhagavatam. This is the evidence. Not that Shukara came and some current connection, you know. You may say that today there was no current. Uh, Bhagavad. Okay, here. In Bhagavad Gita it is said that those who are too attached to seeking material possessions and material enjoyment cannot reach yoga samadhi, absorption in Krishna consciousness. Propaganda, that one can enjoy this life materially and at the same time spiritually advance is simply bogus. You see, you heard that one? <laughs> huh? Be mild, why radical, why neatly shaving hair, supper and clothes, uh, finish your college, get your degree, yeah, change home, why does the problem? Get married, your little wife, have a nice house, career, successful. Then all the people will respect. Others will say, he's a failure, he's a, he's a material failure, he couldn't finish college, he couldn't get a job, so he joined Ashram. Free child, you get and rise for eating and sleeping. No? Finish your college. Keep your prestige, man. You know? What is the problem? Arjun was also married. Bhakti and Thakur was married, man. Krishna was married. 16,000 wives. You take one, be humble. You are servant. You know? More than a, why extreme? Immediately. Cutting hair, shaving hair, jumping on the street. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, man, man. What are you? Be modest. Moderate. Why you want extreme? Huh? How much we heard this, no? Because of, ah, one, two, movie watching, what is the problem? Krishna won't get angry for little chocolate. Krishna is nice God, he's smiling, he's not like Yamaraj, you know? Little chocolate, what is the problem? Is that Krishna will not put you help because of one chocolate? 
He will not, but he won't be with love of God either. No? So all these things, no? So what is the propaganda? Propaganda is like this. Job is important, education important, degree important, good house important, good car important, good dress important, money is important. And you also change, no? And make yourself be back, very nice. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Nice. You see, if, you, if people don't, if we don't give money to the temple, how they will build the temple? No? They are speaking so much, no need to earn, no need to earn, but they are taking money from us, you see? Hypocrisy. No? So many foolish people are doing that. Correct? No? What they want? Actually, they want still keep sense gratification and pretend that we are the other source. Because once you read Prabhupada's books, then it hits you, you know. Mm. How to enjoy now after reading Prabhupada's books? You know? It's my idea, you know? correct? It's my idea. You know? There was a one devotee who he couldn't follow, some or other, he couldn't follow four principles. He couldn't follow even one principle. But he wanted to become the he wanted to be the devotee. So he was asking for Diksha, but nobody was recommending him because we knew that he is not following it. So one day he said, forget it. Just forget it. I can't do this, Krishna, because it's too much, you know. I'm just going to enjoy it. So he called his old friends and they said, wow, great, you came just on time. Tonight is the party, you come. So he went for a party. He dressed in garment clothes. He shaved, he cut out his shikar. He removed all simala. He said, forget it, Krishna, you're not giving bhakti. I'm going to enjoy now. Right. So he went on and uh, there were some girls, or there were some boys, or they were talking all night, they started drinking, so he started drinking. He said, anyway, I don't care now, now I drink, I will enjoy that. He got drunk, with two beers he got drunk, because he didn't drink for years. And uh, he went on talking to one girl. And uh, as he was talking, he was drinking more, more he got drunk. He was thinking, what am I doing here? What will Prabhupada say to me here? One woman, he jumped on the table in the bar, you know. You, but this is all Maya. <laughs> You're not this body. We are a spirit soul. This is all illusion. You think about self gratification, please, you, this other way. He went drunk shouting like anything, you know. <laughs> you know? And in the morning, oh, what have I done, you know. It's too much, you know. Then he came back to the temple and he said, Prabhuji, this is what I did. So why you did it? No, I wanted to enjoy, but I couldn't forget Krishna. Once you read Prabhupada's books, you know, you know it's mine, how can you enjoy it? <laughs> That's the problem. Then we get in this dilemma, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, how to do, what to do, what to do. But we have to go for it, we have to go for Krishna service. And there's so much bliss in associating with devotees in festivals and services, in chanting, reading, dancing, seeing the holy places of, of Krishna's pastimes. Bliss! You go to spend time with the cows, you'll be in much bigger bliss. Go to cow party. They have every day bathing cows, feeding cows, cleaning cows. Bliss, you know. It's, it's, it's spiritual, you know. It's a different happiness altogether. But then you see, this is the thing that now propaganda is like this. Uh, that you can enjoy life and at the same time you will spiritual advance. So Prabhupada said, no way, these four principles, this is a tapasya, it's austerity, to absorb the mind in Supreme Krishna Consciousness, the process of spiritual realization. Okay, so Prabhupada is criticizing Bhagavad Yoga, which says that simply by meditating 15 minutes a day, one can attain the perfection of becoming one with God. That was so popular amongst the hippies, that by yoga meditation will become God. Then Prabhupada is criticizing. Uh, anyway, real devotees of Bhakti Yoga accept only material necessities of life absolutely needed to maintain the body and soul together. They refrain completely from all exaggerated material sense gratification. So nobody is stopping you to have house and wife and family and nice clothes and reasonable, reasonable uh, facilities for the life. That not that wife mind is disturbed. Every day she is in anxiety. Wow, oh, there is rice, very well, we have enough rice for tomorrow. Husband has to make mind of the family peaceful by providing sufficiently for necessities. 
But now it's not that we have to have the best car, the best form, the three kg of gold around the neck. It's not necessary. It's not necessary that I have to wear the most expensive clothes, most expensive shoes, I have to have the latest uh, uh, was it, uh, laptop or gadgets. It's not necessary. Be moderate, okay? Use what you need. But why not be moderate and simple, you know? Why to exaggerate? And what to speak of shifting to the farm and country life? What to speak of working on the earth? What to speak of giving up the city life? So attached, we are so attached. We are so attached to, to our own misery. <laughs> Foolish we are. Okay. So, so many quotes. At the present, it has become a fashion to reject the standard system and present something bogus in the name of newly invented process of yoga. No? What is Prabhupada? Impersonal meditation is a bogus invention of modern days. We could print on calendar the statements, you know, for every month one jewel like this, no? Because uh, Jaya, Bhagavato Rupam, Rupam, that the, one should meditate on the form of the Lord. Now I say, in personal meditation, mind your mind to be mindless, thoughtless. Who? Who can have thoughtless mind? Close your mind. Thoughtless mind means a madman. Perhaps even he is thinking nonsense. How can you stop desires? How can you stop thoughts? It's not possible. You can purify them by engaging in thinking of Krishna's Nama, Rupa, Guna, Lila. Many quotes are there. Vedic communism, Prabhupada says. According to Vedic communism, no one in the state should ever starve. Presently, there are so many bogus institutions which are collecting funds from the public for the purpose of giving food to starving people. But these funds are invariably misused. According to the Vedic instruction, the government should arrange things in such a way that there will be no question of starvation. You see, this government business, Prabhupada said, feeding food, that's government business. Our thing is to educate people in Krishna consciousness. Presently, there are so many bogus institutions. You know any one of those? Hmm? I know one, but I cannot tell. Okay, here, brief commentaries of Acharyas for this shloka. Madhvacharya says, Okay, I'll just repeat the shloka so we don't get confused. This is shloka 13. Correct? Anyat evahu sambhavad, anyat ahur asambhavad, iti shushramadhiranam yena stat vichachakshire. It is said that one result is obtained by worshipping supreme cause of all causes, and another result is obtained by worshipping what is not supreme. All this is heard from understood authorities who clearly explain it. Now this, this verse itself defeats this Jatamat Tatapat. It said different result is achieved by choosing different path. You see, itself, Shloka itself defeats this idea, whatever opinion, whatever path you take, it's what. Okay, so this is how Madhvacharya translated. They say that by knowing the Lord as the creator, one result is attained. And by knowing the Lord as destroyer, another result is attained. Thus we have heard from the sages who explained this to us. What are these results, Madhvacharya said, that will be explained in the next shloka. So he is, a, you see Sanskrit is like this. Madhvacharya has his realization. <coughs> this is how he explains. Vedanta Deshika also briefly comments. The previous Acharyas have said that the means of attending the Lord is different from solely destroying the obstacles or meditating on the Lord. We have heard this from the seers of the Lord who taught us about liberation through a combination of both processes, practices. Okay, here. Sambhavad and Asambhavad. This is how he explains that, that uh, one is the Lord himself and another one is process to come in to the Lord. One of the processes to come to the Lord is to be free from sinful reactions. So the process of purification he says, it's a different from the process of worshipping Lord. You may have some, you may practice some yoga, meditation, or even do some parashita to counteract sin. But unless you worship the Lord, you will not develop devotional service. You will not uh, develop devotion for the Lord, so you will not come out of material world. So this is what Vedanta Deshika says. That refers to the practice of combining asambuti and sambuti, which will be explained in the next verse. So what is the point? You have to do the both. We have to worship the Lord and simultaneously refrain from committing sin or practicing the process which will purify us from the sin. 
Of course, with chanting the Maha Mantra, both things are done simultaneously. We chant Hare Krishna, which disturbs, the, which destroys uh, the, the previous sinful reactions and also automatically develops love for God. So this is, this is it. Balayavid Yabhushan explains, now like this. The wise says that one result is attained by worship of Brahma, Sambhuti. And another result is attained by worshipping unmanifested Prakriti, Asambhuti. We have heard this from the wise who explained this to us. Now, Balladeh Vidya Bhushan Hills take Shankaracharya's intentions, meanings. How Shankaracharya say? Shankaracharya say, Asambhuti is unmanifested material nature. From Pradhana, Mahatattva is created. From Mahatattva, all the Devatas are created. So those who worship uh, unmanifested Prakriti, they will achieve another result. But those who worship Brahma and other Devatas will achieve different results. So here, in the commentary, Baladevi Devusha explains, this verse speaks to different results from performing separate worship, with the aim of showing that both should be done together. The wise says that there is one result from worshiping the Karya Brahman. Karya means that effect. Karya Brahman means which is effect of some other cause. Sambhavat, and entering into worse ignorance. Because if you worship demigods, you remain in material world. And from the worship of unmanifest prakriti, asambhavat, the wise said there is a different result. They enter into darkness also, because pradhana is also a material world, but as not as much as those who worship the manifest Brahman, who worship the demigods. Because the pradhana is uh, just next to Brahman, is a very subtle, the most subtle element of the nature. And also we find in, Brahma, in pradhana, there are people, cities, living entities worshipping there. In all coverings of the universe, in each covering there are people, uh, cities, palaces, and uh, they worship the Lord there also. Uh, but still, it's within material world. We have heard such words of the wise men who have explained the result of worship Sambhuti and Asambhuti to us. Bhakti Thakur explains like this. Atma, God and Jiva. Atma refers to Bhagavan and to Jiva also is different from both matter and impersonal realization of God, Asambhuti. Asambhuti, he explained, this is the matter. Asambhuti is a spiritual process of impersonal realization. We have heard this words from those who have understood the truth. Commentary, he says. Attraction to creation or destruction, appearance and merging, Sambhuti or Asambhuti, in this material world, has nothing to do with the Atma. Atma has no birth or destruction, for it is eternal. Since the jiva is eternal, those who think the jiva has creation and destruction do not know about the jiva. Liberation means jiva is serving his, severing his relationship with matter. That is the mukti, moksha. What is that? Mukti, hitva anyata rupam. Hitva anyata rupam. Mukti means you give up this material body, give up subtle body, anyata rupam, other forms. And swarupena vivasthiti. And then you become situated in your swarupa, in spiritual form. So this is what Bhakti Thakur says here. Okay, thank you very much for coming and hearing. Uh, I'm sure I miss so many bogus gurus and bogus institutions, but that's up to us to preach, to clarify. And uh, it's really up to dedicated preacher who can really explain to people without making them inimical towards Krishna and Prabhupada and Krishna Bhakti. Sometimes on the beginning we just fry everyone around. When we read Prabhupada's books we go, that's it, everything else is bogus. But if you go and tell people who worship for many years Shiva or who worship Baba or anybody, you know, for many years, if you just tell them, ah, your guru is bogus, it won't do. It will make him upset, it will make him disturbed. So we have to become expert preachers. And if you are sincere, Krishna gives you insight. He gives you proper words to say. He gives you some means of convincing people. As we ourselves, we were convinced. No? Not that we all came directly from Vaikuntha to preach. We were hovering on material platform till we met devotees, and they convinced us. So think how you got convinced. Think yourself. How much time you took? What did disturb you, and what did convince you? What did attract you? Hmm? What did attracted us in Krishna Bhakti? How did you become attracted? Gopal Acharya, how did you become attracted to Krishna Bhakti? Yeah. What did attracted you? How, how, how did you get convinced? 
Definitely you had some philosophy in life before coming to ISKCON. No, books, right, by reading books, you see. It's convincing. Prabhupada is very convincing if you read Prabhupada's books. No? Others, what did convince you? Reading books. Reading books. Only reading books. What else? Huh? You? Now you say reading books. <coughs> huh? Oh, you see. He heard on the lecture that Krishna is superior to Vishnu, so he was surprised. He questioned, how is this possible? And they quoted Brahma Samhita. And he, he was convinced. Yeah. So like that, we have to preach to people. You don't have to tell the Sai Baba is Raska. You can say, any guru who doesn't teach you about Krishna is a Raska. Or he does not know. You don't have to say rascal immediately. You can make him understand, you know, like that. We had a boy, no, coming, and he was wearing the Sai Baba's ring. So we told him, no problem, you come, you come. Then he was dancing, kirtan, taking prasad, and became attached to the devotees, you know. Then on one class, we called the surgery class, you know. We had a plan, okay, Tirtha Prabhu was in class, said, look, you have to address this Sai issue, but don't mention the name. So Peter, okay, I'll not mention the name. Put a party with her like this. <laughs> so, but he explained, all lecture he explained. What means bona fide guru? One means bogus guru. You know? So at the end of lecture, I saw our boy. And we are all pretending like, we, you know, we are not on his case, you know. We're just, we're, he is still having this ring, you know. So he came to me behind the temple, you know, he came behind. Prabhu, you want to ask you something? Well, you can ask. Right? No, I think uh, that maybe this Sai Baba, maybe he is not, you know, maybe I, you know, um, what should I do with this ring? He, he already removed the ring. I say, come, I'll show you what to do. So we all did kirtan, we went to <laughs> he was okay. He was looking, looking through it. <laughs> so there was. But thing is that if he hears enough, you make them chant, make them take prasadam, make them read Prabhupada's books, be nice to them, and then they will understand. But you have to tell. One day you have to tell. You have to tell them. You don't have to attack. But you don't have to tell Raskal, Raskal. That already Krishna is doing. Prabhupada is doing. No problem. But when person comes and realizes, yes, he's a rascal, that is perfection. That is the point that he understood, actually. It's not point that calls somebody a rascal and have some satisfaction in that, putting, um, calling bad names people around. That's not our goal. But we have, to, we have to shout, we have to alarm people that they are doing something wrong. They are going to get bad results. They are not going to get same result by worshipping Krishna or worshipping any bogus guru. We have to tell to people. If you don't tell, they will not get it. We have to tell them. But we have to know how. We have to... One day you have to spell it out. If they still... They come and they chant, and even after taking diksha, still they have faith in some of their family deities or family gurus or some um, philanthropic work. Still, still, uh, maybe I should give a little bit, still donation for poor. I give him 80% for temple, but 20% still I feed the poor. And... Uh, you know, they're also speaking nicely, other guru, or they also talk about Krishna, and all these things are going on, you know. So, read Prabhupada's books, hear the classes, clarify doubts, you know. It's not that we are unreasonable religious fanatics pushing, only we are right, everyone else is wrong. But Krishna is right, everyone else is wrong. Shastras are right, everyone else is wrong. And there are four bona fide sampradayas, Ramanujas, Madhvas, Nimbarkas, and Pushti Margis, Balabas, they are all right. They are all worshipping Krishna in different flavor, different mood. These are all devotees. We accept them. We read their teachings. We associate with them. We honor prasadam. We worship together. Bliss. We are not saying everyone is wrong. We say everyone who is not initiated in bona fide sampradaya is wrong. Or he will have partial understanding, not full understanding of Krishna and Krishna consciousness. They may get some understanding, but they may not have full understanding. Every person who prays to God in the world, whatever religion he is, he has some valid points, some good points. Krishna accepts. Yeah. 
by whatever language you pray to God, God will accept. So everybody knows something about God. But complete knowledge is not possible without hearing from an Acharya who comes in proper disciplic succession. And without accepting the guidance of Acharya, one cannot come to God. One will have to take birth again and get association of devotees some other lifetime and slowly, slowly progress to the proper understanding. Unless Sambandha Jnana is clear, who am I, who is God, what is our relationship, and then Abhideya, how to act in that relationship, and then the goal, love of God, not merging, merging into Jesus. <laughs> Christian Mayavad, you know. No, goal should be clear. And then, then no problem. Then no problem what religion you belong, what, what you know, doesn't matter. If you practice love of God, you want to develop love of God, you follow principles of purity, and uh, your goal is to develop love of God and surrender to God, then it's okay. Then you are bona fide. No? So, so it's a required little balance. People get disturbed by us, but once they understand, they appreciate. They simply save my life. We were destitute in books in Gujarat. Myself and Lakshmi Pati Prabhu came to one house. We were pushing sets of Bhagavatam. That was the mood. You push set of Bhagavatam. So we came to one man's house, and uh, Mr. Trivedi, he's a Brahmin, and uh, he saw us. No, no, no. I don't buy any more any book. So I was surprised. You Brahmin, you don't buy the books. You know? No, I already have books. I'm enough. One book for me enough, no need other books. So anyway, his wife was there, so she opened the door. Please, we were sweating, it was very hot, very hot. Gujarat summer was really hot. We are carrying this full set of Bhagavatam and Chaitanya and Charitamrita, two of us, full like this, a lot of books. We are holding like this, full set. So Mataji felt a little compassion, please, you want to drink some water? We said, yes, because we know once we come in house, we show the books, they'll be attracted. These are pious people. There's no, and he's Trivedi, he's Brahmin, he must read Bhagavad. <laughs> so we put the books on the table and we are drinking water slowly, slowly, you know. We need a little time to present the books. And uh, I said, anyway, we are drinking water. I said, why don't you see a few books, just open a little bit, nice photos are there. No, 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 no. I read so many spiritual books. So many people are cheating. I don't want to read any more other books. I read one book. One guru I follow, that's all. Nobody else. They Lakshmi Patiya. So, so who is your guru? Krishna Kripa Shrimurti. Krishna Kripa Shrimurti. Okay, who is Krishna Kripa Shrimurti? I have no clue. Okay. So I say, anyway, but still this is Bhagavatam. Even your guru will read Bhagavatam. Yeah, yeah, he mentions Bhagavatam. But I don't know what you people are bringing. I don't care. I read only his books. No any other books. So I asked Lakshmi, who is Krishna Kripa Shrimurti? I say, I don't know. Who is Krishna? So we are pushing Bhagavatam, he's refusing, he's so stubborn. He said, no, I don't want to be cheated again. One guru, one book, enough for me. So I said, okay, show us the book. And he brings teachings of Lord Chaitanya in Hindi. And his divine grace in Hindi, you have to say, Sri Krishna Kripa Shrimurti, and down is written, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. <laughs> I say, well, but this is Krishna Kripa Shrimurti, this is all Bhagavatam. Oh! Purchase all set, whatever books we had, immediately, you know. He just purchased full set of books, you know. Can you believe this? How you say in Hindi? Krishna Kripa Shimuti something, no? Yeah, like that, huh? His divine grace. Because that's what he read. He didn't read the AC Bhaktivedanta Swami proper. He was so stubborn. No, he is right. Others are cheating. There's a, well, you have to follow Shastra. He got it right, you know. And he was happy the whole set was available. So that was so an amazing experience, how one Prabhupada's books can convince men that what is right, what is wrong, you know. One book he read, you know, Teaching Lord Chaitanya, powerful book. No, you, you can see he was a pious man that he could understand. Teaching Lord Chaitanya is a philosophical book. It's not storytelling, you know. There is some story. Lord Chaitanya met Sanatana Goswami and then <laughs> philosophy is given. <laughs> So you have experiences like this, when you distribute books, you will find all bogus philosophy. Every house there is philosophy, <laughs> how to avoid buying the book. Correct? And the word, you must be expert, how to present, how to speak. And then, they, they, somehow or other, you give wrong argument, they, 
they refuse book. The next time you are ready, or if they ask, now I know what to tell. You become sharp and you become expert, you know. And that compassion is developed. That it's not, it's not their fault. We don't hate people. We hate ignorance. We hate really the. They are suffering. They are suffering. We have to help them. We have to distribute these books. We have to give this knowledge to people. Distributing books is, cannot be compared to opening of three millions of hospitals, because none of those can can cure one man from repeated birth and death from ignorance. So this is uh, this is our duty. We have to we have to disseminate. We have to spread this knowledge. This is essential. Why we are building this big temple? Why do we care? We want to live opulent life. No, we are going to remain same ashram. No current, no fans, no AC. No, not for us. So people are seeing external. They will be attracted. Oh, what a nice temple. Let's go and see. They will say, let's go enjoy in Iskon temple. Nice samosas will be there. Nice food. Nice darshan. Nice grass. Nice people. Nice music. They will see like this. Nice carving. Come, we'll take photos, selfie with the pillars of Iskon Salam. They'll come. Then we'll give them prasad and we'll give them book. We'll give them guidance, darshan, purify them, engage them in the service. No? It's, it's for that purpose. It's for preaching purpose. So people take us seriously. Oh, they have so big temple. Let us sit and hear what they are speaking. Oh, Krishna Supreme. Oh, must be. Look how big temple they build. Must be Krishna Supreme. What to do? These are arguments for people in Kali Yuga, you know. Prabhupada knew. They ask him, why you are building big temple? I was sitting under the tree in Vrindavan. You did not come. Now when we open temple, you have come. <laughs> no? Nobody would come to hear from me, Prabhupada said. It's all, I, I admit, building big temple is little drama from one point of view. But from other point of view, is expression of devotion to Krishna also. That if you, you see Sri Rangam temple, you see Tirupati temple, Kanchipuram temple. Do you understand these kings who built it, they had so much bhakti. Look at what temples they built. You can't build such a big temple without any bhakti, without any feeling for the Lord. So this is also expression of our, of our devotion to Krishna. It's not just show making for to attract people. No, no. It's Krishna's temple. It's Krishna's house. Krishna's palace. Both things are there. Hmm? Okay. Any questions, comments, realizations? I'm sure you have many. <laughs> yes, please. In Odi temple, mm. there are the star professions going on, and one is for Odi Krishna. And one is for Subramanya, they say. Subramanya, the, what the tree? Right. So, in Udupi, Madhvas, they have installed the Subramanya Smurti to the... So far, when I asked the Pandits, what they say is uh, they have different explanations. One is that uh, uh, he is protector of the wealth um, acquired by Vadaraj Tirtha to maintain the... or by Madhvacharya himself to maintain the temple worship in the Kali Yuga. He cured the son of a Muslim ruler, Madhva Sanyasi, cured the son of a Muslim ruler, and this Muslim ruler given so much wealth. So they buried it in one place, so it could be used in the future for, to maintain the worship of the temple, and to protect it, uh, that um, Skanda is installed there. So this is, and right on the Skanda temple, if you go around, you will see that dioramas of that story, how the wealth is fetched, you know, procured. Because uh, Madhva Chara say that every day, whatever pilgrimage comes, they should get full prasadam. Lunch and dinner. Right, samba, rasam, he said, full prasadam should be given for free. So they ask him that how, how we will maintain in the future. Now you are here, people are giving donation, but in the future, how we'll maintain. So he given two things. Uh, he given that uh, blessing that it will be maintained if you worship Krishna, and he given this Akshaya Patra. There is a pot and the spoon, and he say if you worship every day this pot and the spoon, Akshaya Patra, our kitchen will be inexhaustible. So Madhvacharya given that, and later on Vadirashtirta, I think he got this wealth. Anybody remembers exactly? Yeah, Vadirashtirta got this wealth to maintain. So Skanda is installed to protect that. This is one explanation. And then another explanation was given by another Madhva Pandit. They have a concept, because Madhva Chara says that devatas are pure devotees. So they worship them as, that, as the servants of the Lord. Uh, 
they don't, they are very clear. They don't worship them as a Jiva Tattvas. They don't worship them equal to Krishna or anything like that, but as the servants of the Lord. And uh, there is some link, he explained, he quoted some shlokas, there is some link between Sankarshan and uh, that deity uh, of Skanda installed there. There is some link he, with Ananta Shesha and Sankarshan. I forgot exactly. He quoted some shlokas explaining that. <laughs> so we can inquire a little bit. We can ask Madhvas. We have some Madhva friends here in Salem. We can ask them, why do they worship there? But they are very clear. There no demigod worship in Madhva line. <laughs> That's not there. Even if you see small Ganapati, it's Vishwaksena. It's not Ganapati, that why at all. It's Vishwaksena is eternal associate of the Lord, eternal form of Vaik- from Vaikuntha he has. It looks like Ganapati. <laughs> they won't worship demigods. Yes, please. Yeah, that's why you don't go to school. <laughs> From childhood, but this is just after this. Mm, Modern education was introduced, British education was introduced in India. But in Gurukuls, nobody was teaching like this. All rivers lead to the ocean, any part will do. Yes, if you worship any demigod, ultimately it's meant for Krishna, but you should know it. But if you think that any demigod is equal or superior to Krishna, then, or independent. Remember that one? To consider the names of demigods to be equal or independent of the names of Vishnu. No? It's offense. Where is the Sanskrit goes? Shivasya, Shivishnor, Yaihaguna, Namadi Sakalam, Diya Binnam, Pashya Chakalu Hari Namahi Takaraha. That's not proper understanding. So, no proper understanding, Nishfalam, no proper result will be achieved. So, we are brainwashed in the school, we are right. That's why we should make our own schools where proper knowledge will be teached. Avidya. Avidya is taught as Vidya, you see? And what is the result? People don't worship God. Any worship is okay. And they think this is our tradition. But this is last 50 years only going on. Previously, Gurukuls won't teach like that. Avidya. <laughs> now the Brahmin families, they eat uh, eggs. Not directly, but they eat in the cakes purchased in the shop. So I asked them, how can you eat this? Did you ask them, is it eggless cake or not? Ah, most of cakes will have egg. We don't take egg like this. But if it's mixed in the cake, what to do? We are not killing. We are not propagating it. But if it's mixed in cake, then what? You see, so, avidya, no understanding. No understanding at all. Now they preach, eggs are vegetarians. Vegetarians. Oh, egg is vegetarian. Is it egg growing on the tree or what? How <laughs> is egg vegetarian? <laughs> yes. no? When egg grows, becomes Loki, is it? Pumpkin. No? And they say milk is not vegetarian. And milk is not vegetarian. <laughs> Just see. You know, milk is not vegetarian. <laughs> Anyway, yes, this, is, this is not philosophy, this is foolishness. This is, uh, yes, Prabhu. The point of philanthropy. Philanthropy. Some people, they understand, like when we say it's a government business to take care of the people. Some people, they say that the government is corrupt. We know government is supposed to do, but government are corrupt. We, we see corrupt. Right. So that's why it's your duty. Right. To take. We have no problem. You support us, we'll distribute prasadam. Prabhupada said, we can feed the whole world, provide governments, corporates. We have no problem feeding everyone. Every temple, they should prasadam for free. Why not? But not, that is not our only goal. That our goal is this should prasadam and teach about Krishna. Our goal is not just, we are not satisfied simply by feeding the poor. Because that doesn't solve the problem. You have to preach to people, you have to tell them. We are not this body, life is repeated, birth and death is there. To stop circle of repeated birth and death, one should be Krishna conscious. So you have to preach to people, you see. It's an opportunity to preach. And hospital opening today, you tell me, honestly. Do they open hospital really to help people or do they open hospital to earn money? Huh? 
modern education, good business, college, school, what a money is coming, income. It's a big money. In India, it's a big business. Oh, we are educationalists. He thinks I'm benefiting people. Or another factory owner is saying, we are feeding 3,000 people in our factory. We are maintaining 3,000 families. You are exploiting 3,000 families. Why don't you be honest? You, know? you pay the minimum and you get the maximum. And he wants to pose as philanthropic, doing business. And they're all bluff. They're all bluffing, you know. All bluff. Christians, why do they open schools and colleges? To convert people to Christianity. Very clear, very openly. That they're not even hiding it, you know. Correct? Huh? Yes. Right in this purport of this mantra 14, there's one. Um, there's two lines very nice. Mantra 14? Sorry, mantra 12. 12. 12. 13. 13. 13. 13. Okay. Um, Prabhupada writes it like this. He says, uh, see, in this way, uh, to, one has to become pure devotee of the Lord. Such accomplishments are possible only when one worships the real Krishna and not some fabricated Krishna. Right. Invented by foolish men without knowledge of the intricacies of the science. I was just many right, times. Right. Many times he used to say this point. And the you know, Don't cover up Krishna. You know, don't show this. Right. It's direct. Right. It's very, very nice. Yeah, I missed that point. Don't not fabricate that Krishna. And this is exactly what they they, they don't want to they don't want to present Krishna as he is. Always they have to have some deeper meaning, some twisted meaning, some allegorical meaning. Why? Krishna is Krishna, playing flute. Krishna is dancing with gopis. Krishna is enjoying. Ekudeva, Nitya Lila Anurakta. He's enjoying past times. This is Bhagavan. He's enjoying. We are not. No? They try to cover up Krishna's dancing with gopis. They don't like to talk about that. <laughs> Why not? Okay, thank you very much. Shila Prabhupada Kijaya.